Good morning. Uh, since the last lecture, we had been looking at the matrix uh, flexibility approach, which essentially included the matrix force method. Today, we are going to be starting off on what I call as the matrix stiffness method, which is essentially the matrix analysis approach for the displacement method. Okay. So, uh, let us review what the displacement method uh, talks about. The displacement method essentially goes at define degrees of freedom. Okay. That is done very easily. Then next approach is the member force deformation relations and third kinematic relationship between member deformation and displacement corresponding to degrees of freedom. Four is the virtual displacement principle to relate loads to displacements for degrees of freedom. Okay, so I think this is the overall uh, scope of the displacement method and this will essentially be the stiffness method. The reason behind it is will shortly be uh, understandable. Let us go and look at Okay, here uh, let me call this member one, member two, member three. This is just illustrative example. Okay, and let's say that you have this and you have this loads. I'm not putting down right now what the loads are, etc. We are just looking at it in defining uh, the entire problem. Okay. So, how many degrees of freedom do you have in this particular case? Uh, assuming actual rigidity, we know that you have 3 degrees of freedom. So, we will call that R1, R2, R3. These are the degrees of freedom, right? So, therefore, I can say that the R vector is equal to R1, R2, R3. In the matrix method, everything is either a vector or a matrix. Okay? So, therefore, I am writing down the displacement vector corresponding to the degrees of freedom in this way. Okay? So, that is my degrees of freedom. Next step is to relate the uh, member uh, force deformation relations. And what are those? If you look at the slope deflection equations and I write the slope deflection equations down, we will see that this and I am writing it uh, using the um, rotations from the chord. Okay? So, in that case I do not have uh, Ei. So, it is going to be 4 Ei by L 
theta a b. This is from the chord to the tangent plus 2 e i by l theta b a plus fixed end moment a b. So this is the slope reflection equation. I'm going to write this in a different form. I'm going to use the same notation that I have been using. I will say that vector v which is equal to v1 and v2 is equal to theta a b theta v a. Similarly, S which is equal to S1, S2 is equal to If I write them in this fashion, you will see that I can write S1 S2 as And I'm going to call this the fixed ten moments as the these are the member and moments for the kinematically determinate structure. So this is the kinematically determinate structure. So that's zero, okay? Because uh, in the displacement method, the base structure is the kinematically determinate structure where all degrees of freedom are uh, restrained. Okay? So, that the fixed end moment essentially comes from that. Okay? So, now it is interesting to note that this can then be written in this format. S is equal to K V plus S 0 where k, if you look at it, k is equal to 2 e i by l 2 1 1 2. This is of course for a member i, this would be this. This is a stiffness matrix. Member Of course, flexural member stiffness matrix. If you have a axial member, if you have an axial member, then you will see that K i is equal to E A I upon L I. The interesting point to note is that K I is an inverse of the flexibility matrix. You will see that that is true for the flexural member as well as the, for this it is obvious because the invert of this is L upon E A which you already know. For this, you just need to invert a 2 by 2. But this is actually the way we had set up the slope deflection equations anyway, if you remember right at the beginning. Uh, so, there is nothing uh, new in this. So, this relationship at the member level exists as long as you define the degrees of freedom to be theta AB and theta BA, 
which are known as defamation degrees of freedom. I'm not going to go into those details because that comes in a much later course where you relate uh, different degrees of freedom for a member. Okay? We are being consistent and we'll continue with this approach of uh, defining the degrees of freedom. Okay? So essentially what we have done is that once you SI is equal to KI into VI plus SI0. This gives us the member force deformation relation ship. Okay? So this gives us the member force deformation relationship. What's the next step? The next step is our kinematic relationship. So let me take the example that I have and that is you know, just broadly looking at it. How do we relate the member force deformation relationship? The way you do it is first and foremost in exactly the same way that you got the uh, load member force relationship in the flexibility approach. You put R1 equal to 1 and the other two equal to 0. If you look at the displacement pattern, this will be one, 1. So if we look at is 1 by L, same thing here. Okay? So if I'm going to call this member 1, member 2, member 3, the way we do it is we say VI is equal to AI into R. Okay? So this is the relationship that we are looking for for each one. And the way we get it is, again, if you look at it, this will become V1, V2 for each member is related to, here we have three degrees of freedom, R1, R2, R3. And so what we have is A11, A12, a13, A21, A22, A23, and A31, A32, A33. Each one we get by putting R1 equal to 1. This one we get by putting R2 equal to 1. And this one we get by putting R3 equal to 1. Okay, so, so the thing is, by taking the kinematic relationship, this is known as the kinematic relation. Okay, so as long as, uh, so what we do is we put each one and for each one we find out its column. So here, if you look at it, what is V1? Sorry, it's just A21 because there's just this is a 3 by 1, this has to be a 2 by 3, so you get this to be 2 by 1. So you get A11 and A21. So let me find out A11 and A21 for the first one. What is it? Well, from the chord to the tangent. So that's positive. 1 over L. A21 from the chord to the, this thing anticlockwise positive 1 by L. What is A11, A21 of 2? 
zero zero and what is a one one a two one of three you will see again from the chord to the tangent it becomes one upon l one upon l so we've got the first uh, column okay for the next column what do we need to do well put r2 equal to 1 R2 equal to 1 says this is 1 and this is 1. This is R2 equal to 1. So what will my A1, 2 and A2, 2, two for the first one look like? It's going to be 0, 1. A1, 2, A2, 2. two of 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, a 1, 2, a 2, 2, of 3, 0, 0. Okay, then finally, put are 3 equal to 1 so this is 1 and this is 1 and therefore a 3 1 and a 3 2 of 1 is equal to 0 0 a 3 1 3 2 2 is equal to zero one and a three one three two of three is equal to one zero. In this way what we have done is we have evaluated a i for each i. I made a mistake here. This is one, three, two, three. One, three, two, three. One, three, two, three. The first one relates to the degrees of freedom of the member and the last one refers to the degrees of freedom at the global level. Okay? So this is two, three. First one member level, second one okay so we have evaluated this for uh, every member and that is gives us the kinematic relations okay which essentially means vi is equal to aIr so if we now put this into our entire uh, equation by substituting we get SI is equal to KI AI R plus SI0 SI0 being the fixed end moments okay so now this is incorporating the uh, the kinematic relationship into the member force deformation relationship. So you get the member forces in terms of the uh, this thing. okay. Now the next step, 
the next step is virtual work okay and in virtual work what do you do you use the principle of virtual displacement to relate use principle of virtual displacement to relate R and SI. See this relationship would typically be a kind of an equilibrium relation okay and the principle of virtual displacement actually replaces the equilibrium relation okay so how do we do it well what we do is we actually apply a virtual displacement pattern okay which arbitrary virtual displacement pattern which can be given in this fashion okay the virtual displacement pattern is given in this manner okay so this is a virtual displacement pattern right then the external virtual work is going to be equal to what you will see that this is equal to the work done if you look at this this is nothing but saying that this is nothing but summation r i r i this is this is basically force into the displacement cor corresponding to it okay this i'm writing it in matrix form in this manner this is all i'm doing the displacement corresponding to each degree of freedom multiplied by the load corresponding to that degree of freedom and this can be written in exactly this form okay so therefore the external virtual work is virtual displacement into real loads okay what will be the internal virtual work done the internal virtual work you will see will be each member will be undergoing and again this one really effectively is summation of uh, you know I mean hmm. so this is summed up over all the members I is a member okay so this is the internal force now the question here is that how is this related to this okay there are some additional terms which I'll bring a little bit later right now I'm not bringing in the internal this does not include all the internal work terms okay uh, especially if you have uh, member loads uh, there are certain loads that are not included in the internal work if you put it in this but right now I'm just bringing it in a broad uh, framework later on I'll bring in all the details see understand that this is the internal virtual work this is the external virtual work done at every member level this again you'll see is nothing but you know v1i into s1i plus v2i plus into s2i which is essentially the um, you know moment into the virtual rotation at that particular joint okay summed up over all the members hmm? now the important thing over here is that obviously uh, if you if the system is in equilibrium which is it is right uh, under the loads the structure deforms and so sets up forces what happens is the virtual work principle says VWI is equal to VWE okay now since VWI is equal to VWE it stands to reason that this into this is equal to summation over I into this but this does not help us you know because uh, this is something this is something else but can we relate can we relate the virtual dis 
rotations at the member levels from the displacement? Sure we can. We already know that Vi is equal to AIR. This is of course when we have real. But whether we have a real displacement or a virtual displacement doesn't matter. So this is also equally valid. Okay, that the virtual rotations are given in terms of the uh, arbitrary virtual displacement in terms of the kinematic relationship. The kinematic relationship remains the same whether the displacements are real or virtual. Okay, because the boundary conditions are exactly the same. So we exactly go through the entire steps all over again. So therefore, if you look at it, this implies that Vi transpose is equal to R transpose Ai transpose. Now, how we got from here to here is basically matrix algebra. When you take transpose, you, you interchange the order. You can go back to any matrix algebra book to understand this. Okay. Now, this relationship we are going to incorporate in this. So, ultimately then this becomes what? R transpose R, okay, uh, summation over all the members, R transpose AI into SI. Now, this does not depend on I, so I can actually rewrite this as R transpose summation AI transpose SI. Okay, and therefore, what we ultimately have is that the virtual work equation lands up being this becomes a virtual relationship, virtual work equation. And note here that this has to be equal to this for any arbitrary R. So, since the R prime transpose is appearing in both the cases, we see that this implies that R is equal to summed up over all the members AI transpose SI. This looks like an equilibrium relationship, but it is actually a virtual work equation. It's a, it looks like I have got R in terms of SI, but we have used virtual displacement and never forget that. That it is essentially we have to take into account all the work done up till now. In the internal work we have only included this aspect and so therefore uh, later on we will see that there are other terms that come into play and we will see that uh, it is important to write. But right now I am just writing down the basic equations and therefore if we put that together, this is valid if we only have loads that do not have uh, reactions. We do not, if we only have member loads, joint loads are not a problem, uh, that do not have reactions that do work when subjected to a virtual displacement pattern. This is very important. Later on we will include this effect. Do not worry about it right now. Okay. So, if you look at this, so therefore this is true. Now, all I am going to do is substitute SI in here and what do I get? I get R is equal to summed up over all the members AI transpose and SI is what? It is equal to KI AI R plus SI 0. So, if I rewrite this, this becomes summed up of all the members AI KI 
a i r and note that since r is this this is the summation is only here plus summation over all the members of a i transpose s i o this is nothing but the structure and therefore r looks like k r plus we will see later on there are some other terms in here okay but this in a sense represents my solution so therefore <clears throat> what what do we normally we know we know this we can find this out and we know this and we can find this out and therefore we solve for r once we solve for r this is my si so i substitute r and i get my member and forces and that in a sense is the member force def i mean uh, member uh, structural analysis you found out the displacements corresponding to the degrees of freedom and you found out the member forces okay so uh, this overall is the basis for the stiffness uh, method the, ma the matrix stiffness method now i am going to uh, spend quite a few lectures because there are certain issues which i have not i say you know i put one dot 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 and this dot 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 includes some terms which come in under specific uh, conditions okay now what i'm going to do uh, for the rest of the time in today's lecture is actually uh, take a simple problem and illustrate uh, the methods that we have done uh, i'm going to solve a lot of problems using the stiffness method because you will understand why because t in today's uh, computer uh, application where we do analysis by computer software packages this is the method the the stiffness method is really the method that is used uh, for solving problems and therefore till now i have always made on done only illustrative problems because they essentially are uh, you know um, uh, methods that are useful but uh, in this particular method since this method is the one that's used the most in today's world i am going to solve a lot of problems so i shall start off by looking at simple problems and then get more and more complicated till we have tackled all kinds of problems which you can come up with we are going to look at first structures with joint loads then we are going to look at structures with member loads then we are going to look at structures where the members are not only subjected to loads but also to temperature okay and slowly we will continue on and look at all the variety of problems so that you are exposed to essentially the spectrum of problems uh, of course one of the things that you have to appreciate is that uh, since i'll be look doing everything by hand i'm only going to use at the most one or two degrees of freedom uh, in a in a structure okay so let us let us start off by looking at some simple problems and then go on from there okay so uh, let me take one of the problems that has been the uh, you know that i have been looking at thematically for a long time okay and let us take the situation where uh, let, let me put it this way this is 5 meters this is 3 meters this is 4 meters okay this is ei this is ei 
and uh, I'm going to say that this is being subjected to a load let's say of 10 kilonewtons okay and we have to find out what uh, the displacements at all points uh, you know and uh, in other words the deformed uh, shape of the body under this load and also find out the member and moments so that we can draw the um, bending moment diagram for this structure. Okay. First and foremost no point we have de dealt with this particular issue long enough to realize that this is a 2 degree of freedom uh, structure. Uh, you see uh, I have done enough of how to compute the kinematic indeterminacy or the number of degrees of freedom of a structure. So, from here on out if you do not understand how I have taken these how there are two degrees of freedom and why I have taken these two please go back and review uh, from the past few lectures ok lectures in this course. So, these are the two degrees of freedom ok. So, the first and foremost is the force deformation relationship for each member ok the force deformation relationship if you look at it uh, both S i are equal to K i into V i understand this that the plus S i o the fixed end moments if you look if you look at the fixed end moment since there are no member loads this is equal to 0 ok and for both of them uh, for i equal to 1 and 2 k i is equal to since they are identical 2 e i by 5 into 2 1 1 2 ok. So, <coughs> that is my uh, k i and that gives my relationship this is the force deformation relationship for both the members they are identical ok because the stiffness member stiffness matrix is identical uh, because E i is the same and the length is the same ok. So, the next step is to find out the and what I am going to do is I am going to do R 1 on a separate sheet of paper, but I am going to put R 2 here because you people know that R 2 is relatively simple R 2 would imply this and therefore, if you look at uh, A 1 2 A 2 2 of 1 it is going to be equal to 0 0 1 and a 1 2 and a 2 2 of 2 is equal to this is my v 1 that is theta b c. So, that is going to be equal to 1 theta c b is my v 2. So, this is equal to this ok. So, the next step is uh, we have already this is the force deformation relationship this is the force deformation relationship and this is the um, kinematic relationships. So, we are we are looking through them reasonably fast now for 1 note you know we have already done this, but I want to go through this again kinematic relationship there is never any end to kinematic relationships. See this point cannot go vertically because this member would have to elongate. So, this will only go this way. So, it has come 1 over here ok. Now, if this member was left to go its own way this would have gone exactly the same 1 here but you see it cannot right. So, now it has to move it is going to be moving along this line ok. So, now it has to move perpendicular 
to it so that this is the point where C is. So now for this one and what is this? Well, well let's look at it. This is 90 degrees and let us see uh, <coughs> how much this entire thing has gone up by. Okay, so this one if you look at it <coughs> is going to be, how are we going to determine this? See, what we have to determine is that if this is one, okay, uh, how much is this going to be equal to? So let us, let us look at that. This we don't know. This we know is one and this we have to find out. Okay, this is this one. Let's look at it. What kind uh, of uh, relationship? Since this is theta is tan inverse of 3 by 4. Okay, so if this is this theta, then this is the theta. So that means that this is 3, this is 4. So this is going to be 4 by 3 and this is going to be 5 by 3. Okay, so now we know that this is 5 by 3 and what will the displacement pattern look like? The displacement pattern will look like Note, this tangent over here has to be this way, the tangent over here has to be this way, and the tangent, because R2 is equal to 0 and here you have a fixed. So therefore, once you have that, and the tangent over here of course has to be this way, this becomes, the chord is this, the chord is this, so this angle and this angle are going to be 1 upon 5 and this is also going to be 1 over 5. This is 5 over 3 and this is 5 so this is going to be 1 over 3 and this is going to be 1 over 3. So therefore my A 1 1, a 2 1 of 1 is going to be equal to from the chord to the tangent positive 1 by 5, 1 by 5 and my a 1 1, a 2 1 of 2 is equal to from the chord to the tangent negative minus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3. Okay? So having got that, now we can put that V1 is equal to 1 over 5, 1 over 5. This is going to be equal to 0, 1 into R and V2 is equal to minus 1 by 3 minus 0, 1. So you've got the kinematic relations. Now, from virtual displacement we know that capital R is equal to summation over I 
ए आई ट्रांसपोज के आई ए आई इन टू आर नोट दैट हियर द प्लस एस आई जीरो सिंस एस आई जीरो इज जीरो दिस इज द ओनली थिंग ओके नो व्हाट इज कैपिटल आर इक्वल टू दिस इज आर वन एंड आर टू एंड इफ यू लुक एट दिस इफ यू लुक एट द थिंग यू विल सी आर वन is equal to 10 kilonewtons and r2 is equal to 0 kilonewton meter so therefore r vector is 10 and 0 okay so now this is my a1 vector this is my a2 vector so all i need to do is just go through the steps and let us go through these steps i mean it's it's instructive to go through the steps i'm going to see what ai transpose ki ai r okay this uh, if you look at it this part can be actually written as the contribution of the ith member to the structure stiffness matrix okay and note that ki ai also has a specific uh, aspect to it because you will see that si is equal to ki ai r plus si 0 in this particular case this is 0 so si so therefore this one i will say is ti this gives me directly ki ai is equal to ti this directly gives me s the member and forces in terms of this so i'm going to actually compute these as a step uh, in the whole process okay so let me first do ki ai okay so k1 a1 which is equal to t1 will be equal to 2 ei by 5 2 1 1 2 multiplied by uh, the uh, this thing for the first the this which is 1 by 5 0 0 okay and this is going to be equal to let's see the 2 ei by 5 i keep it outside inside 2 by 5 plus 1 by 5 is 3 by 5 here 1 by 5 and 2 by 5 is 3 by 5 here 2 into 1 1 here 1 2 so this is my t1 now next i'm going to compute T two, T two is K two A two, which is equal to two E I upon five two one one two multiplied by minus one by three minus one by three, uh, and then. One zero. Just let me look back at my old thing, and then I'll get back to you. Uh, it is one zero. Yes, one zero. Okay. So this is equal to two i by five minus. Two by three minus one by three is equal to minus one. Minus one by three, two by three is minus one. Here I have two. Here I have one. So this is my t two. So next is computation is k one. 
which is essentially equal to A1 transpose T1. Okay? So A1 transpose is equal to 1 by 5, 1 by 5, 0, 1 times 2 E by 5, 3 by 5, 3 by 5, 1, 2. So if you look at this, if I put 2 EI by 5 outside, inside I get 3 by 25 plus 3 by 25 is 6 by 25. Here, 0, 0, 3 by 5. Here, 1 by 5 plus 2 by 5, 3, 5, and this, 2. Note that it is symmetric. It has to be has to be symmetric. So K1, the contribution of the first member to the structure stiffness matrix is this. Similarly, K2 is equal to A2 T2. Okay, A2 T2, which is equal to A2 is minus 1 over 3, minus 1 over 3, 1, 0, and T2 is 2 EI by 5, minus 1, minus 1, 2, 1. Okay, and this, if you go through the steps, I'll take 2 EI by 5 outside, and inside you get 1 over 3, 1 over 3, so you get 2 over 3. Here, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3, minus 1, and here 2. That is K2. Now if we add K1 and K2, uh, what do we get? K becomes equal to 2 EI by 5. And inside I have 6 by 25 plus 2 by 3. And here I have 3 by 5 minus 1, 3 by 5 minus 1, and 2 plus 2. Okay? So if I look at this, 2a by 5, this becomes 75. If I take 75, I get 18, and here I get 50, so I will get 68 upon 75. This becomes minus 2 over 5 and this becomes 4. That is my structure stiffness matrix. Now, since I know R is 10, 0, 2 EI by 5, 68 by 75, minus 2 by 5, minus 2 by 5, 4 into R1, R2. This way I can solve for R. I just take invert this, multiply this and I can get R. I can get R and then my SI are equal to TIR. I can find out my SI and once I find out my SI, I have solved the problem. I'm not going I'm not going into the numbers you can you can do the numbers yourself it's very simple I've evaluated each and every term and you just need to go through the steps to evaluate them okay and once you got your SI since there are no member loads uh, you can draw the bending moment diagram very easily and once you draw your member bend, member and uh, this thing you can also get the the support reactions and everything okay this in a sense uh, illustrates briefly the displacement method. The numbers you go through yourself and please solve this uh, problem and get through it. Next time we will see what the answers are to this one. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.